Welcome to my All You Need To Know About series. This time we'll be talking about... Welcome Commander to your first ship. Yes, in this game you will be addressed as a commander. Let's get started on your journey in Elite Dangerous. Here is your ship. Pretty, isn't she? In front of you you can see the chat, your target and its information. Options which are available, your ship shields and life, your ship's power management which is done with the arrow keys, speed, fuel, your ship status and the info panel. If you press 1 you will find the navigation panel, transactions and current contacts. If you are targeting someone you can see their ship modules and target them specifically. Also if you are holding any cargo it will be seen on the cargo screen. If you press 2 you will be able to type in the chat. If you press 4 you will see your status, modules, fire groups, cargo again and your ship's functions. Let's open the starport services. Here you can refuel, repair and reload your ship. On the bulletin board you can find jobs, which are used only for grinding reputation and not the money. In context you can see your earnings and fines. Here you can access the black market as well. In the shipyard you can see the ships the station has to offer, stored ships in the station and locations of your stored ships. Then we have the market where you can buy or sell your items. Lastly we have the cartographics tab, where you can sell your discovered information about other systems. But before we go anywhere, we must outfit our ship, so let's go to the outfitting menu. Here you can see three tabs, hard points or weapons, internal components and livery or so called paint jobs. We know two types of weapons, thermal, these are lasers for destroying shields, and kinetic, these are bullet type weapons used for hull damage. Both types do more damage to the mentioned source of life. Then we have the railgun, which has both damage sources. If your ship has two weapon racks, I would recommend two lasers. If a ship has more, I would recommend the stronger half to be pulse lasers and the weaker half to be multi cannons. We know three fire modes of weapons fixed, gimbaled, and turreted. Fixed weapons fire in the fixed direction. Gimbaled try to predict your target movements but have lesser damage. Turreted weapons are used only on bigger ships because they have low maneuverability. These weapons will fire at anything in their arc of fire, so be careful where you place them. I would recommend both lasers and bullet type weapons to be gimbaled, but some commanders prefer lasers fixed so they get more damage out of them. But kinetic weapons should always be gimbaled. Same goes for the burst lasers. Then we have utility mounts. You can customize your ship to your desires. In the internal tab we have all other components of your ship. Your power plant gives power to your systems and should be upgraded the most. Bulkheads are your ship's hull. Thrusters increase your ship's weight capacity and speed. Frameshare Drive or FCD is the hyperspace module. Life support is the oxygen tank when things get tough. Power coupling is very important when you manage your power. With this upgrade you can fire lasers or sustain your shields for longer periods of time. Or fly faster. Sensors will inform you of targets nearby. Fuel tank can be upgraded for long trips. The shield generator will generate shields. The cargo rack holds your cargo and the basic discovery scanner discovers plants when you target them in hyperdrive. The last three components can be swapped for others, but I would not recommend swapping the shields. After you have upgraded your ship, you will need to go to fire groups to manage weapons. Then we will check our modules. As you can see, I am at 109%, but I will not explode when I take out my lasers. That is because I set my kill warrant scanner which takes 5%, my cargo hatch which takes 3%, my FCD, which takes 2%, and my fuel scoop, which takes another 2% of my energy, to the second priority. That means when I deploy my weapons, the ship will be below 100% usage and disable the secondary modules for power management. Let's launch and retract the landing gear. If you don't like any flight controls, you can switch almost all of them in the settings. Ship released. Engines engaged. Landing gear retracted.
You should also note that rolling and pitching will turn your ship much faster than just yawing. You can also notice the little line beside your speed. This line will tell the best speed for turning your ship. When you fly your ship, you will have flight assist turned on, meaning you will not have to worry about gravitation and other things, but you can disable the assist for some quick combat maneuvers. Flight assist off. Flight assist on. Let's try to absolute to show Vuru. Oh, we see that we can't make it without refueling. The solid line will tell you where you can fly without refueling, and the dotted line will tell you where you can't. We also have one more route we can choose from, and that is the fastest route. Currently we were on the economical route, meaning we were trying to save with our fuel. If we select the fastest route, we will be at point B much faster, but we will consume way more fuel as well. If I change route to fastest, Look how less jumps we must make, but look again. See where the fuel line stops. This is much less fuel efficient. Let's pick Lensali and punch it into FCD. Oh, we are mass locked. This means there is a big object near us. In this case, Four, the station. Three, you can get rid of two, the mass lock simply one, by driving away engage. from the object. Now let's go. When you come into a system, you will be thrown right before the star. There, you can fuel scoop if you bought this module in the outfitting menu. This is giving you free fuel. This can be very useful if you are transporting cargo from fuel long scoop distances. Disengaged. Let's select a station we want to dock to. At the target, you can see how long it will take you to get there. Let's get something straight here. If you fall below 5 seconds of travel time, you will miss your destination. That's why I like to fly at a 7 second distance. In the target window, we can see how far away from the station we are. When you get to 1000 km away and you are going less than 1000 km a second, you can safely get out of the hyperspace and find yourself before the station. First we must ask for permission to land or get blown to bits. Then we must find the entrance. Arrows on the target will tell you where that is. Now that we were given the landing pad number, we can see it above the minimap. Let's enter the station and track the landing gear. Proceed landing using R and F keys to go up or down. Now let's talk money. In this game there are 5 main ways to earn credits. Trading, smuggling, bounty hunting and 2 ways of pirating. Let's go over each one. But first, let's cover what ships each type of player should use and the progression he will take. You don't need to follow the chart directly, you can skip some ships. The link to the image can be found in the description. Remember, when buying a new ship it is highly recommended to save for at least one full repair of the ship, or you could be sent back to a sidewinder from an anaconda. That's why I always store my previous ship. The trader will manipulate the market around the galaxy, buying low and selling high. On the galaxy map you can see which goods a system needs and which goods it has too many of. You can buy from the system which has too many and sell to the system which doesn't have enough. Simple as that. The trader should use the trade ship. The smuggler will sell illegal goods to a station via the black market. This method is more rewarding but riskier as well. You must avoid every scan before docking or you could be dead from the police. You can always enter a dock if you are wanted or carry illegal goods. Just don't get scanned on the station or things can get messy. The most common illegal things are slaves. Yes, slaves. The smuggler should use the trade ship. The bounty hunter will go to resource extraction sites found in rocky planet rings and hunt pirates for profits, then go back to the station and redeem the vouchers he got from killing the criminals, and get his reward. If he gets killed, he will lose all his vouchers, so be careful. If you are interested in this method, you can check my guide to bounty hunting, shown on the screen. The bounty hunter should use the combat ship. A pirate will go anywhere and hunt anyone for their cargo, either player or an NPC. A pirate should use the cargo opening limpet and the cargo scanner. Both can be bought in the outfitting menu at Starport Services. A pirate should use a multi-purpose ship. 
Then we have the safe pirate. This white knight of a pirate will go to unknown signal sources, hunt throughout the space and kill the criminal transporting the goods. He will get the voucher for killing the criminal and then pick up the illegal cargo the criminal was holding and sell it like a normal pirate would. This method is much safer since there is usually no police and signal sources. And that is it. All useful links can be found in the description. Hope I helped you at starting your journey in Elite Dangerous. If you didn't understand anything, you can roll the video again. For more advanced things, you can use the Elite Wiki. Thank you for watching and stay awesome.